Yeah, I think. Uh, I think we're live. Yeah, I think I. So? I, I yeah, good. Well, uh, welcome everyone. Good afternoon or good morning or good evening, depending when you're where you're joining us from. Uh, thank you very much for making the time for this presentation, which is a launch, which is also um, a tour. It's a whole lot of different things, but it's full of content and it's uh, hopefully going to be uh, to your liking. We have a fantastic guest here who's going to run us through uh, the new platform that we are to launch today. Um, before we start, this is a joint event organized by the Goethe Institute and the Prince Klaus Fund. Um, my name is Bertan Selim. I am uh, head of programs at the Prince Klaus Fund. And obviously I stand here in on behalf of both the organizations. So thank you so much for making the time uh, to talk about arts, culture and the environment. Um, I wanted to just mention one or two technical matters before we start off. And that is that um, this talk is being live streamed on a number of different media. So we have uh, Zoom for those of you joining us on Zoom. We have YouTube and we also have Facebook. One matter we would love, love, love to get all your questions in. So please do send these to us. You could do so by using the question option in the YouTube channel. Um, I understand you can also send in your comments through the Facebook, which will then be transferred to us here. So hopefully we'll be able to get your questions throughout the discussion that we have today. I will be moderating the day. My, my unthankful job, I would say, is also to do the timekeeping, which is always the difficult one when you have a, an interesting guest and when you have a lot to talk about and this brilliant platform. Um, today here with me, I have the lovely Maya El Khalil, who is joining us from Oxford in the UK. Maya El Khalil is a curator and has done a number of different work uh, uh, around the world internationally, uh, focusing also very much so on the environment. And today we are going to be talking about this, uh, uh, the exhibition that you've curated for uh, the platform Take Me to the River. For those of you that might be curious already to check it out and see what this platform is, you can visit takemetotheriver.net. And this is the platform that also Maya is going to navigate us through and talk us through and give us more of a background information as to why it was curated this way, what was the choice, the ideas behind it, um, and and everything. Before I give the word to Maya to, to also introduce yourself properly and to introduce this initiative and your work behind it, um, perhaps I can give some background information as to how Take Me to the River came about. So the Prince Class Fund and the Goethe Institute already in 2018 started off a, an incredible collaboration to support artists and cultural practitioners working on different environmental climate issues. Um, this initiative was called Artistic and Cultural Responses to Environmental Change. What we did with this initiative was annually we brought out uh, a call for proposal starting in 2018 and then 2019 and 2020. So we had three consecutive calls for proposals to support initiatives that are on the intersection of arts, culture and climate environment. Um, what came about was a number of incredible artists initiatives and uh, um, uh, initiatives that, that were basically set up all across the world, start you know, from Brazil um, all the way to India, uh, all the way to, to South Africa. So I'm delighted to also have today here with me, Mael Khalil, that's gonna tell us a bit more about the platform, but also actually walk us through some of the artworks, some of the arts projects and initiatives that have now actually um, installed themselves in this exhibition, which we are now doing online. Obviously, this is, as, as you might have already experienced many of them, this is an online event, I'm afraid, because of the situation we're in with the pandemic. But I must say, I'm so deeply impressed, uh, Maya, with the work and the fact that um, the platform, at least from the way I've experienced it, is very intuitive. Uh, but it's also very user friendly, hopefully also outside of a COVID environment. Um, so 
after we arranged these calls for proposals, I think that the idea of Take Me to the River was also coming from uh, a thinking that we wanted this, these works, these, these incredible uh, initiatives from around the world to sort of receive a platform where they can be seen, where they can also uh, be easily accessed, but also create more community around the people uh, that are working on similar uh, issues around the world, and also hopefully a platform that we will be continuing to enrich as we, we go forward. Perhaps also I would like to mention, some of you might have already seen a number of talks with Maya and myself. Um, and these talks were done in the, in the auspices of uh, the NISI event, which was organized in the previous uh, uh, weeks or months, I should say, uh, together with uh, the Goethe Institute and the Prince Klaus Fund and the NISI Initiative. Now, with no uh, uh, further ado, I would like to hand it over to Maya. Maya, thank you so much for being here today and taking the time to run us through this incredible initiative. Thank you, Bertin, and thank you everyone who are joining us, who's, who's joining us today. Um, yes, I mean, you, you, you mentioned a, the term community, and I think this is, this is extremely important within the context of, um, of this exhibition, is uh, because most of these projects happened in, with communities, with indigenous communities all over the world, uh, primarily in uh, communities that are that are really suffering the, um, the consequences of the climate change. So when we thought about this exhibition, um, initially it was thought of as an exhibition, as a physical exhibition and having to tr very quickly to um, translate it into a, uh, into a digital uh, platform was, wasn't that, that, that easy. We didn't, we didn't want to really just replicate a physical thinking into, into, uh, into this digital um, uh, medium. And we wanted to look at how we can tell these different stories in a nonlinear way. Um, and how can we navigate? What, are, what, are, what, what, what links these projects? I mean, besides, uh, um, besides the environmental uh, advocacy and, and the climate emergency, but what, what are the different topics that are addressing? And we realized that actually uh, we looked at five main themes. The first, what's, mo what's most important is that the whole exercise was very much an exercise, um, an, an exercise in, to, in, in listening, in really listening to the other, to other voices, uh, to listening to multiplicity. Um, and so the five themes that we discussed um, and that formed the umbrella of this platform, the first one talking about subject of rights. What is subject of rights? Uh, subject of rights is, is really looking at nature as a as a as a living entity as that has a river that like that has a right to exist has a right to um, um, to be looked at from a, from a legal point of view as 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 people as person as a personhood as environmental personhood and so nature we talk about nature that has rights the right a river has a right to flow uh, the forest has a right to breathe um, and recognizing that right is not really it's not it's not a. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not really creating that right. It's very much res respecting or, or recognizing that it's a fact. Um, and and since then, I mean, now there are landmark cases that mean that this fact has really entered the terrain of uh, international law. Um, the second theme we talk about is uh, object of abuse. And in object of abuse, we're looking at how the, the way we are treating nature today as, as an object. And when we, treat, when we separate ourselves from, from nature, um, we, extraction becomes easier. So we're looking at extraction. We're looking at oil that is removed and spilled. We're looking at plants that are eradicated. We're looking at mangroves that are depleted, rivers that are poisoned. So, and it's not, it's not a simple mathematics. It's not... Uh, an acre of land is not one to is not a relationship of one to one. We're reducing an acre of land. We're reducing. We are we are eradicating cultural traditions and ways of lives and uh, um, and the history and it, a, a whole history, ecological history that is decimated. Um, so from from this from this from looking at nature as 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 an our addressing nature as an object of abuse. The third theme that we're looking at is nature prosecute. So under this umbrella, we're, we're, we're discussing 
were discussing uh, the reaction. We have unsettled a very complex system, and uh, and this has this has led to violent 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 uh, reaction from from nature in a way. If, uh, when we look at tsunamis, we're looking at rising sea waters and uh, um, and disappearing islands. Um, so, and not only that, we're also looking at we're experiencing the increasingly um, unpredictability of the elements. Uh, our fourth um, umbrella theme is we're looking at humanity centers, and in there we're we're we're, uh, we're discussing the people, I mean, the reaction of people, of, of communities uh, that have for no, no crime committed that have been sentenced. Uh, there's a lot of, lots of ways of lives, farmers that are becoming fishermen, uh, uh, migration, displacement. Um, and finally, uh, I mean, it's not, it's, again, it's, uh, it's, it's non-linear, so we navigate it um, um, at different moments, but we look at the final thing, which is motion to recover. And, and and this is the reason of all of these projects is that they they, it's, they they provide a ray of hope. How do we recover? How do how to recover what has been irrevocably lost? Um, so it's again it's about listening and it's about engaging. So it's about listening to those who have really intimate understanding of these ecosystems, um, indigenous people. Uh, and and we're also and engaging with, with the communities that are suffering and are experiencing these uh, the, the climate uh, crisis at, at most. Um, and we also we look at how documentation become a weapon. Uh, it's important to document and to, uh, and it's important to, uh, to 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 broadcast. And education again is another weapon. So these are. Uh, in, in short, these five subjects under which we are um, we are looking at all these projects and dissecting and, and taking take, taking pieces of these stories and incorporating them within that narrative. So it's not one project that features under one theme. Uh, often we realize that a multi um, this it, one project would fit under a multitude of uh, of, of themes. Um, I don't know, um, Bertrand, how did you feel when you were navigating that? Uh, I mean, I yes, uh, the platform. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a great question. I think you see, I think to me, I always experience it from a more intuitive point of view of when I see, a, you know, a, a website, what does it invite me to? And I think what's really interesting about this platform um, it, it's a showcase, obviously, but it's also a very intellectual sort of summary of not just the different projects that are that being supported through this joint initiative of the Goethe Institute and the Prince Class Fund, but it's also actually an endeavor to summarize some of the major topics that are out there when we talk about environment and climate change. So I, actually my question then to you as a curator of this is, did you have these themes in mind, these five themes, were they basically themes that you really wanted to sort of address in your thinking in the climate, on climate and environment, or were they actually themes that for you, they derived from the works that were supported? Absolutely. Um, no, these are themes that derived from the work that supported. So these are themes that are, that are, that are addressed in one way or the other by all, the, uh, all these projects. It's about, it, it was really digging deep this is why I say it was an exercise in listening, because it, it, this is exactly what it was, uh, digging deep into every project and realizing uh, the complexity of, of these projects. Uh, we're talking about um, uh, artist collectives, artist work, work or collectives that have been working sometimes for, for over five, six, seven years with, with, with these communities. So it's not, um, it's not an, uh, these are not end products. This is not an it's not a, an, an artwork that is uh, uh, that we're looking at. We're looking at the whole process of uh, of discovery, of working, of uh, engaging. Of uh, so, if I, uh, for instance, if um, if I want to talk about one of these projects on the subject of rights, uh, um, maybe a Radio Sarakura, for instance. Radio Sarakura is a project that. Uh, 
uh, that is primarily uh, linked to audio. So it's about recording, it's rec recording and, and working with, uh, with uh, a marginalized neighborhood of Bixica in the center of uh, Sao Paulo. Uh, so, and, and this, and the Bixica area is one really of, the, of maybe a unique area that where indigenous and Afro-Brazilian communities lived. And they've been fighting for over 40 years to really salvage this area from, from really state uh, um, uh, activities and to erase that, that way of life. And um, so it started in 2018 um, and, um, and, uh, uh, and they've invited um, uh, in, in partnership with local residents and activists and artists and collectives and cultural institutions, the, the objective was really to, to build um, uh, the ecological memories of Bishiga and to, to really to highlight that the culture, the richness of the cultural landscape and, and really to avoid, to, to, to rally uh, voices so that to avoid, uh, to keep on fighting and keep up resisting. Mm. Um, and yeah, we're showing here. So it's um, sorry, Bertrand. Um, and and the, the beauty of this is that in Vishika we have they have a, one of the oldest theater and the oldest uh, dance school dance school in in, in the country. Um, and um, um, and uh, for instance, uh, this theater of Officina um, uh, Teatro Officina was built. Or in, in its in latest format was built by Elino Bobardi and Elina Bobardi, the architect, and and there, and it's it it has always been a place of resistance, and and in this place we have they talk about these three rivers that are completely buried and asphyxiated under un, under this uh, under the real estate. So it's it's again it's like a manifesto about really bringing out. Um, um, uh, bringing out and giving life to, the, to these rivers that are quite important for the indigenous communities living there. Yeah, and, and I think what's, what's for me, what was fascinating was that, I mean, obviously this is a website that has aggregated a number of different works under five different themes. And I think um, it, it really the platform it, to me feels like an invitation to really explore the different themes you might be more interested in, but at the same time understanding how these different initiatives really touch upon many different themes and the issues when we talk about climate change, it's not just one issue necessarily, but it shows the sort of the knock on effect that the issues have throughout the different sort of the, the spectrum of, 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 let's say, society or even economics. Um, and that's really interesting because what I was really surprised by uh, and, and, and really very sort of, I, I, I thought that was, that was such an eye opener, was really the diversity of the issues encompassed by discussion, by this discussion on the conversation on climate change and the environment. I think normally I know that as a consumer of, of news, which I do a lot, especially now that I'm home most of the time, you tend to hear a very sort of one-sided story of what is you know going on in terms of that discussion it's it's very much on a policy level it's very much the sort of the same political forces that are leading that discussion but it also has this sort of one dimensionality to it and i think what's interesting about the website is that there's this multi-dimensionality also in the way that you can maneuver it but also in the different issues my question to you is was there an element of surprise for you that you saw in these in in the projects, but but also through unpacking these projects through these themes that you thought was interesting or unexpected, perhaps? I think there was there um, there were several elements of surprise. Um, the main one was that it wasn't um, even though these projects are carried are carried out by artists or a group of artists. Um, it was very much the voice of the communities that we're hearing. So, um, so for instance, in one of the artists, uh, Shikibo, the art of peace, um, it is, it's very much about empowering the local community, the Shipibo community to learn how to, uh, how to, how to video, how to, how to video themselves so that they can tell their own story. Um, so the, the artists there, the community, Mika Prod over there, uh, what they did is that they, they, they held workshops and, and eventually what you are seeing is, is the outcome of these workshops, not from the artist's point of view, not from the, 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 art, the work of the artist, but more the work of, 
of the Shipibo community. This is their story. This is the film that they filmed. Um, and, and, and they are using uh, technology, what you call modern technology. They are using technology actually to reiterate and reinforce their own, their own culture. So that even within their gener the younger generation that they, 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 they acquire an appreciation of the richness of the knowledge that they hold. Um, so, and it's also, they use also this technology to fight against governments, to, to fight, to make, to make public uh, the day-to-day the, the -day abuse that these indigenous communities are, are, uh, are experiencing. Now, if you move away from, let's say, South America, but, I mean, it's, happen it's happening all over the, uh, the world, but also when we move to, for instance, to Africa and to is in, uh, one of the project, Mundas in Ale Alexandria, uh, it's, um, here it's, it's, it's a documentation. It's really, it's, it's about photography. It's, it's about photographing, a beautiful photography, but very painful because what we are photographing are as this cement factory that have invaded the life of a whole community living pre living there pre factory, mm -hmm. and again it, we're talking about this the, the, the um, a community that have been forgotten that that were where I mean the institutions over there are trying really to 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 hide uh, to hide or to to not to engage with 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 the story and. What a platform like this allows us to do is very much to uh, to reach out, to make mm -hmm. it visible. Again, it's 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 another. This is, I think, the power of a platform like this is that to make visible and to tell these stories. Mm. Um, yeah, and and I think that we also, as you're speaking, uh, uh, Maya, we're also seeing the pictures, for example, from Mundas, the the project, this initiative by, yes. by Mohammed Magdi of of Egypt. Uh, from Alexandria, and it, it's an incredible body of work. And I think it's it's also um, I think it also highlights aspects of how differently you can tackle the different issues. There is radio, there is photography. I think there's also much more sort of multimedia. There's uh, pure documentary, and that's, that's cartography and yes. Um... Yeah, Sorry, I interrupted you, Bertrand. No, no, it, it, exactly. So my, my question was more about, and, and you mentioned it yourself, the sort of the international scope, you know, we were speaking about Latin America, and then you said, you know, Africa using the, the example of, of, of Mahdi's project in, in Egypt. Um, how reconcilable is the internationality of the topic when you talk about a platform like this that has to, in a way, it's all encompassing because we're trying to illustrate a problem which is not singular. So to what extent is it actually also possible? And, I, and to me, it seems really exciting because it seems like almost like one of these like childhood kaleidoscopes that we would be, uh, you know, looking through these looking glasses. And, and that's what you see here. You see a plethora of so many different approaches, but also such distinct projects that are actually completely not similar one to the other. Yes, they are not similar, but at the same time, they are tackling similar issues. Um, again, it's like when we look at most of these projects are addressing the fact that we are all interdependent. Um, and when we look again at, at nature as a subject of rights, uh, um, uh, we, we, uh, we we not, it's not only about recognizing, it's about respecting the belief of uh, of, um, of communities that, be, that feel they are part of the environment, where we talk about, for, for instance, the living forest, Kausak Sasha, in the case of uh, Micha Vallejo's project, uh, um, uh, Secret Sarayaku. Um, and, 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 and there he's, it's, they believe that anything, it's, it's a balance, anything that you imp impact on the environment, it is felt, it's a ripple effect that's felt all over the world. At the end of the day, uh, we're talking about the indigenous communities are 5% of the total population, and yet they are taking care of almost 80% of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, the, uh, of, our, of the natural, uh, of the Amazon. I mean, it's, uh, so, um, yeah, uh, so in a way, this is why when we, when we brought these five platforms and we dissected these projects, is, is to create these links between these projects. It's to create, it's to bring, to bring together all of these voices and to to compound the, these stories, to really reinforce these stories. 
Um, they're different in the way they are being carried out, but they are very similar in, 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 uh, in the challenges that they are facing. Um, uh, yeah. But I... Yeah, and it, it's, it's interesting that you, you mentioned that because I think that, um, I think it also is about representation and, and I think it's, you know, you were mentioning the, the Secret Sarayaku project by Misha Vallejo in, in Ecuador. And that's a very interesting case study because it is actually also, a, 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 you know, it's a community which is very much sort of endangered just by default. And I think that um, the mindfulness of that project in terms of really enabling people from that community to speak of their own rights to speak of their own way of doing and dealing with environment, uh, also in a way I suppose invites us so to, 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 to not just see it, but also to understand better. Um, and what I think I wanna say as well, I think what, what perhaps makes it more difficult in a presentation like this, which is purely digital, is I think the platform is also very much intended for you to lose yourself in it. So I do suggest to everybody who's oh, yes. watching please do go to the, to the platform, take me to the river.net and, and, and simply explore the different videos. It's multimedia, there's video, there's sound, there's, there's, there's moving image, there is still image. There's a lot of text that you can read through. Um, and I think that is really also the wealth of, of the platform is that it's really an incredible resource of factual information, but also scientific approach to um, uh, giving us a piece of, of the minds of the people who've run these projects um, and different initiatives. I'm wondering, um, there is also, I, I also want to just encourage everybody, uh, please do send in your question. I see that there are a few questions and uh, Maya, may I pose you one or two of these questions now? Or did you want to first? Yes, of course. One? I just wanted to uh, uh, comment on one point that you're saying is that ex these projects are, are are multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. So it's not it's it's artists, but it's also scientists that are working together, biologists, sociologists. Uh, so, and uh, and to give and I wanted also to give one example because we're talking about doom and gloom here, but we're also talking about really rays of hope. Uh, when we talk about choralysis, and I hope you can see some of the images here. Um, uh, for instance, in, um, I don't know, Daniel, can you, I just should, yes. Um, so we're seeing here some of, some of the uh, images from, from Coralysis. Uh, and this is, it's a project that's carried out by Gilberto Esparza and in, in Mexico, and it's dealing with the coral reefs. Is that also coral reefs are one of the most uh, vulnerable marine ecosystem on the planet. And what uh, Gilberto is, uh, what, uh, 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 what uh, Gilberto is doing is that he's, he works with biologists and with scientists to come up with a kinetic uh, device that can use the current that exists within water to, uh, to, to, to facilitate, a, a, to generate electricity and to uh, facilitate a sort of elect electrolysis that happened to, for minerals to be deposited and to accelerate that process of biomineralization of the coral uh, skeleton. So it's, it's about really finding solutions uh, in, in, in an interdisciplinary way, but also about engaging, and this is so important, engaging the community. Because even in a project like this that looks quite technical, um, Gilberto was working with, 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 uh, with children uh, within the community, so they were engaged in that process. Um, and, and, this is, and, and this is one way of really sensitizing and, and building awareness across uh, the community. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, uh, Maya. I'm gonna put you forward uh, maybe one of two questions and they're not necessarily in a, in a certain order, so, so do bear with me, but uh, let, let's take it one by one. And these are very interesting questions that are sort of deriving from, from your presentation. Um, so when we talk about digital projects, and most of these obviously are, are they, they all are digital, but they also are meant to be applicable in the local context. So what the, the question is, um, the potential that they have is a, a, a wider sort of geographic coverage, and, and yet they remain uh, uh, as an archive. And then some of them basically have a wider geographic coverage, and some of them remain as an archive. And the question there is, would they have the same impact? And this is an interesting question because it then comes down to the impact 
that these projects generate within the local context. And sort of uh, solutions was one of the interesting discussions that we've had in the past about what should an artistic initiative related to the environment, to climate, really offer in that sense as an alternative. Could you say something more about that? Um, sorry, but what's, what's exactly the question? Is that in terms of... So the question... You that, that, that uh, digital, sort of the digital, uh, uh, the, these projects, basically these initiatives, they are diverse and some of them have a sort of a wider geographic coverage and others remain very much of a sort of an, of an archival nature. And then the question is, what is, uh, do they actually have the same impact uh, because the projects are so different and they're meant to actually be applicable in different contexts? Um. I think the the project um, I would call it more like a living archive. It's a living archive because these are these are issues that we are still tackling today and will be tackling for a very long period of time. And these are projects that are ex, ex, uh, that are happening across a certain uh, I mean a length of time and they are still happening now. They started before the law, the call and they're still uh, happening now. And and again we have. We were, we're talking about it, and you mentioned it, Bertin, is that there is still the 2019 and the 2020 call that hopefully we will incorporate within or uh, within that platform. But what's more important is that within that platform, there are links. Because as I said, we're not mentioning all the project or the totality of each project. It's they're, they're really very large project and very, they're quite complex. So, uh, so the, uh, it's very important that when people navigate that platform, but also go and explore further by, by clicking on these links that take you to the individual projects. And from these projects, you are taken again, because they also have their own references and their own research and their own uh, 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 links to, to, to a bigger, a wider, uh, uh, wider initiatives. I mean, there are, so this is, this is the importance of a project like, uh, of a platform like this, is how many connections can you build mm. and where it can take you. Yeah. Uh, so. And that's interesting because the actual, the same question ends with how are they evaluated? And I think um, what's interesting about what you say is obviously uh, these projects, initiatives, they tackle issues that are still relevant today. Um, and that are ongoing and that we're going to be dealing with in the future. So I would think that there's a huge learning curve within each initiative and the people that are running these um, amazing initiatives to ensure that I think, uh, first of all, that there is community, that there is also engagement within the communities that they're working in. But also, I would say that the platform in itself is also meant to be a learning uh, um, uh, sort of a learning curve in that sense, a platform where people can share and engage and actually strengthen through collaboration uh, outside of that, that specific context. Bertrand, uh, one point that I'd like to stress is um, the power of a platform like this and the power of these projects is that they created a, a beyond creating empathy because I think empathy is not is, is not enough. What it creates is that the, what we what what we're calling the term allyship. Allyship is it's where we put these relationships on equal par, where it's so it's about working together. So it's not a group of uh, of artists that came to impart knowledge or to it's a one way transfer. It's it's on the contrary. It's these are we are all working together at an equal an equal uh, in, in 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 an allyship. So where there is equal give and take and equal benefit and and equal respect. So it's not only, again, and from the perspective of these communities, it's not only a respect towards each other, but it's also to respect to nature and to the environment. Yeah. So yeah. the yeah. word allyship in this project is extremely important. And now um, there is a question also uh, from one of our viewers that asks, actually very uh, uh, related to how we began this discussion saying, well, essentially welcome to my home because we're doing a lot of this from home and uh, from online and digitally. Um, and the question is, what is the possibility of hosting this virtual exhibition or such a talk, let's say, within the community space to then reflect on that specific local issue. Obviously the question is looking forward into the future when we will be in a more safer environment outside of a pandemic. 
Well, uh, we definitely hope that we'll have, first of all, we hope that we'll have the ability to um, have a physical version eventually at one point. We'll be bringing even more of this project together. Uh, but, uh, but also the power of, a, of the digital platform is that it can, it, it is reaching these communities because, um, um, I mean, I, I, we have people now that are listening from all over the world and, and these communities are quite uh, connected digitally. Um, and this is this is the work of uh, we saw with if you navigate you will see uh, now we have a, the, the photograph of uh, of uh, secret Sarayaku where they have uh, they are using the te technology to uh, to broadcast their stories so we are connected we are reaching all of these uh, the different uh, communities and uh, yes so yeah. so I think even I mean physically obviously there's nothing uh, that supersedes the physical contact and the physical relationships that we build yeah and uh, yeah yeah that's a uh, that's uh, thank you for that um there's another question and that's interesting because it also crossed my mind but i'm happy that uh, uh one of our viewers has also stated it uh the name of the platform is take me to the river and i remember if i were to go and google it you there is a very famous song and so what you get is, first of all, a lot of these YouTube videos, and then obviously you come to our platform, and our <laughs> platform is takemetotheriver.net. So that's where you can access that. But um, go ahead, Maya, can you say something more about the choice for the title? Well, it was influenced a bit from, from the song, but it's also influenced by the idea of the river and the idea of flow and, and the idea of a journey. Uh, so I think it's just... Um, it, it was an impulsive decision. It's, uh, it's a beautiful, it's, um, it's poetic and we need to approach a project like this with a lot of emotions. Um, so there is, um, um, uh, there's this, and there's this element of flow, where flow it's, it's always, uh, it's, it's when, when you visit, when you go on a journey, when you keep moving, when you keep adapting, uh, mm. And, and water in the future, I mean, now, even now, water is going to be such an important uh, uh, subject of, I mean, now it's subject of conflict, subject of, of, uh, uh, of it's a resource that, is, uh, that, that we need to preserve. Uh, so, so water is quite an important it's a source of life. And a lot of these projects are, are dealing with the issue, around, whether either around water or with the subject of water. And, and the, so it's, maybe, maybe about the, the I, I don't know if everybody's familiar with the song. Um, and I know that some of our, some, I, I think. Uh, by old, Radiohead. Head. Yeah, and, 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 and some of our viewers are probably of a, of a younger generation. I know that my nephew's also watching, who's only 13, or he's turning 13. I, I'm wondering, can you say something about what is the song about? What does it, what's it play an ode to? It's, well, the song is by Talking Heads. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's a different it's a different theme. So it's it's in terms of theme, it's not really uh, it's not the same themes, but it's it's still it's about it, it's about a journey, and it's about um, it's about love, it's about pain, it's about so um, it's about relationships. So and if uh, you listen to it, it's a beautiful beautiful song. <laughs> Good, good recommendation. Thank you, Maya. I'm wondering. Um, it sounds very positive. And I think this whole notion of flow, it, it gives a very sort of positive feel to the message actually that you're also giving through the exhibition. Are you positive when you think about climate and given the work that you've seen behind, behind these specific initiatives? Um, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive and I have hope. And, and this platform is about hope and all of these projects is about hope. <laughs> If you don't believe that we can actually change and we can uh, we can influence things, uh, I don't think we would be doing any of this. Uh, we're not embarking in any of these projects. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm definitely I'm I'm positive, and um, and I'm positive also with all these movements of coming together. Um, I mean, before the before the pandemic, it was uh, it, it was heartwarming to see people coming in Black Lives Matter and, and, and issues of environment. I mean, the whole, we were all coming together in, in the streets and, and, okay, the, and the pandemic now made, made us realize even more how important it is that we work as communities. 
Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it, it, it's, it's I, I, I want to sort of relate it back to, um, you know, I think, I think th there is a question here and I'm thinking maybe I might be able to even answer this question, uh, 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 perhaps to start it off and then hand it over to you, Maya. The, the question is uh, also set from a viewer is how have you seen any, so have you seen any interesting connections forged between these artists and collectives and the different initiatives placed here. So maybe I'll start off by saying um, when the Goethe Institute and the Prince Klaus Fund came together to launch this initiative and to support initiatives around the theme of, of arts and, and climate and, and environment, we did so under a number of, of different auspices. One was that uh, for those of you who know the work of the Prince Klaus Fund, we work um, in, in, in all sorts of different international contexts regionally, specifically in Latin America, in Africa, in the Caribbean, Eastern Europe, and in Asia. Um, and that is simply because that is our focus. And when we uh, uh, teamed up with the Goethe Institute, we decided to focus that, that, that support in these different contexts. Now, what we also uh, did quite actively, and to be honest, is also partially thanks to the situation that we're in with the pandemic, is we organized a number of different Zoom events where we actually brought people together, first of all, to speak among themselves. And, and that was a really interesting exercise because you saw that there is incredible hunger for people doing similar work and that feeling of feeling very isolated when you're doing this work. Because for many, I think to put it into context, many of the work that you will see in this platform, they are not just front runners and pioneers, but they are very sort of lone rangers within their own context because either these issues are unpopular within governments that they don't want actually you to address, or there are issues that basically are discarded because of political uh, conviction. So. I would say, and then I'll hand it over to you, Maya, I would think that this platform is also uh, a, a place where we expect the sort of the convergence, uh, these connections to be forged between the different initiatives. Yes, that's correct. I mean, that's correct. This is why, this is why we brought all of these projects together. Uh, and this is, this is why also we organized all of these discussions. Uh, it's 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 for these uh, communities to to talk to each other, uh, and to support each other, uh, because when something is happening in in uh, in Lubunga when uh, when when there's when younger generation are, are are going through are being taught about the forest and and they're interacting with the forest, also these younger generation can also interact with projects in uh, in Morocco with uh, that Salih Banaji is carrying out also with the younger generation teaching mm -hmm. them about the oasis. Uh, so it's um, the whole purpose of a platform like this is to forge these connections. Um, and and you were right and you were right back because you were mentioning something that about um, some of uh, in, uh, where these projects were taking places in areas that sometimes are quite dangerous. And uh, for instance, take me to the river uh, by Residencia Walden. Uh, Marta Andreu was working with five filmmakers uh, from Colombia that were supposed to go and photograph or film, sorry, film uh, the, the river as, as a subject. And how do you film a landscape as a subject? Now, from these five filmmakers, only two were able to reach the Atuata River because of um, because it, it was it, it was very risky because of the drug cases because of uh, obviously governmental issues. So um, and and they could not reach there. It was too dangerous. Two were able to reach there, and and uh, Marta uh, Marta I mean with her with the, with the way they worked with these filmmakers. Okay, how what do you do, how do you deal with something like this? And in her own words, she said, well, you learn to film the obstacle. You don't go around the obstacle. You actually do film the obstacle. And you film, you find ways of, of, uh, of, yeah, of, uh, of, de of dealing and, and, and portraying the situation. And the result is a group of five films that act as one film that is, that's, that's beautiful. Now, we selected only one of, of these five, but actually the five has been integrated into one film. So you learn, it's, um, it's, 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 these are really, I mean, these communities are living in very challenging uh, 
and very dire circumstances. And these projects sometimes were quite halted. And, and, uh, but the beauty of a platform like this is that it, it, it gives ways, it gives ways of maybe uh, taking a learning from each other's experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I see that there's, there's also a number of, of questions coming in. So we're going to try to do as much as possible. I'm also looking at the time. I told you guys I'm going to be the bad guy. I need to sort of end this on time. Um, so we have about, um, let's say, 13, 14 minutes to go, Maya. I want to pour, uh, put forward to you a question related to this now that has been posed by, I'm receiving now the questions with the names of the people. So I can also say that this question comes from Valeria Posada. And the question is... Uh, dear Maya, in which ways do you think that the content of these projects were enriched through the use of digital platform? Um, um, digital platform instead of a physical exhibit. Well, there are two main components. First of all, because it's a digital platform, we are, reach, we are reaching a, a broader segment of, 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 of the population. So we are everywhere. Uh, number one. Number two, it's also in, in terms of time, it extends and it, in, 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 it exists uh, for a longer period of time. So from this perspective, I think, um, I think we, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a great experience. I mean, it's great that we have the digital platform. Um, also from having a physical uh, exhibition, it's, it's also extremely important, but, but probably we Initially, we were thinking of selecting from this project, whereas with the, with the platform, we were able to actually address every single project uh, that benefited from the grants. So um, in a way, it's, um, um, we, 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 le we, um, we gained a lot by having a, a digital platform. I, I do hope that, uh, that we will be able to, at a later stage to have a, a phys physical exhibition because Again, it's uh, there's there's something with distance when you when you when you when you talk to artists when you talk to communities when you interact with projects. Uh, there's always there's, the distance with the screen is uh, it's beyond it's it's beyond only a, uh, a a scientific distance. It's it's also you lose you lose you lose you lose uh, you lose the energy of the people. You lose the energy of the product. You lose the energy the there's definitely is uh, you lose something but um, and, and that's interesting because actually you all it also relates to one of the questions in the in the comments here um you did mention that initially the the idea was conceived to be a, a physical exhibition um uh, and and then is the question to what extent actually did this have to be very different than an, than a physical exhibition to capture the sort of the message that you wanted to show Um, we, we went completely to the drawing board. I mean, once we knew that it was going to be a digital, we really, it's, it, it was easier actually to completely uh, separate the two, the two thinking uh, models. With the physical exhibition, we were thinking of, okay, of, of also how to emerge because there's, we, we're talking about different elements. We're talking about scale. For instance, when, when you are facing a screen, they all have the same, you're experiencing every project or every work in, 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 within, within the confine of a screen. When you're in a physical exhibition, you also play with, with the elements of the exhibition, with scale, with audio, with mood, with immersion. Uh, we, you, you, you play also with the three dimensions. So you, and which is quite important because even though these projects are rich in information, they're even richer in, 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 emotion, in emotions, how, how we are affected and how we feel that we're, we are implicated. Mm -hmm. Again, beyond, being, uh, beyond building awareness, it's really about um, building a feeling of we're implicated in this. Um, so, so I would say it, it, it was... It's it's different. Now we're talking about a story and, and the, uh, about a narrative and about how 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 when you are scrolling from one image to another, how can you entice or encourage the viewer to to go sideways and to go uh, to break that linearity? It's easier to do that in a physical exhibition. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, 
I have one question. I'm trying to sort of transpose myself into the shoes of an, an artist anyway in the world, in fact, that's doing work related to, you know, environment, climate change, et cetera. How, uh, how would I be able to connect to a platform like this? How can I connect to the people? I mean, is, can I, can I uh, send you my work and can it sort of be uploaded? Or what, what is the thinking in terms of growing it or in terms of, perhaps not growing it, but, but, but in terms of how can I connect to the people? Because I think the sense of that community is not just to see it and have it presented, but is there a possibility to interact? Well, the platform is not interactive, uh, but but the platform can can as, as I said, if you go in uh, let now let's talk technically with the platform. If you're seeing the platform and you go in a uh, uh, in the menu, which is on the right hand side, on the top right hand side, in the menu you go to artists and in, in in artists, then you go to each each project, and then each artist they have their own links. So this is where you go. You, you, this is where you can go to the personal pages of these uh, of these artists, or to the or to the uh, um, uh, the, the project sites, and uh, so that's one way of connecting. Another way is obviously to you know to uh, to send us emails, but uh, but this yeah this primarily this is it's uh, it, it it has not been devised as an interactive platform. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'll, I'll maybe ask you a, a, a last question and, uh, and then give it over to you for your finishing words. Um, when you look at the platform and you see these initiatives and you sort of as, as you had to an, analyze them, obviously, and you've done, you've done a lot of that in the past to also find their place within this platform. Do you primarily see these projects as being artistic, cultural, or do you see them actually primarily as being related to environment and climate change? And do you even think that that is important in that sense, in, in that division? Because I'm, I'm trying to think of it also as anybody out there in the public that might not be an artist or have anything to do with, with the environment. We tend to label things because we need to make sense of what they are. And my question is, what has been the challenge in terms of the presentation and the format to give people really a message of what we're really looking at? Um, I think we used art as a, uh, I'm not going to say the word tool because I don't like it, art is not a tool, but, probably, but we used the mechanism of art as a space to, to, to find ways, creative ways of showing these projects. And initially at the, at, uh, at the base of it, uh, it, artists found ways of, of really, um, of thinking these projects to, of bringing them to life, of, of, uh, of conceptualizing these projects. So, um, and this is what we're relying on in this. We're relying on this creative ways of, of uh, of, of looking at these at these projects so it is I, I, I don't think we can differentiate between uh, the artistic element of uh, of that exists within that platform and uh, and the fact that the main uh, the main the grantees are artists that are that have been working on these projects and and the and the, and the theme of it of uh, of their uh, uh, of their research of these projects, which is the environment advocacy and and the voices, the indigenous voices. So, again, and again, we are reinforcing the interdisciplinary aspect of it. So it's not it, these are led by artists, but it involves all members of community of the community, and a in a topic that is that is extremely important today. So the, for the viewers, it's not it's not only people that are uh, either engaged with environmental uh, environmental advocacy or artists. Very good. Thank you for that, Maya. Um, I'm going to ask you to give us any sort of last peace of mind from your side or anything, if, if there was anything that I forgot to ask or anything that you think is important that people should know or perhaps how one should, you would propose as the curator, how would you propose that we navigate this site um, as, as a final conclusion? I, um, I would advise um, 
first of all, you need some time to navigate it. But I would advise uh, the viewer to just get lost in the, it's, it's okay. I mean, there isn't, there isn't a one way of navigating that, the, the site. There are different clues that can take you back and forth. Um, uh, and even uh, what we initiate, what you try to incorporate at the beginning is that uh, even when you're watching videos and recordings and some of the recordings are quite long, but you can, you, you have now control uh, below to basically see wh which part of these recordings you want to listen to. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a platform that can be explored at different moments, different lengths of time, different ways. Um, so I would I would really urge urge the public to I mean the audience to really get lost in the, in, in it to lose themselves in it. And the platform is going to be. On. And I want to say one more thing, Bertrand, is that I, I think I made a mistake. I mean the song is uh, Talking Heads. Uh, it's by Talking Heads. I think I said Radio Heads by mistake. That's oh no, I, th I think you had it right. No, no, I think you had it right. I think you had it right. I think, I, yeah, I think I said talking heads. Yes, I, don't yeah, know. I think you you had it right. It was talking heads. Otherwise, I would have All said right. something. But uh, yeah, you were right. Otherwise, right. We're both probably taken by the by the music itself. <laughs> oh yes, exactly. I just wanted to make sure that we get it right. Maya El Khalil, thank you uh, very much for joining us uh, tonight. I want to say also to the rest of you uh, watching, thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Um, what we've done today is we have presented the platform Take Me to the River. Uh, it is a platform that it's been curated uh, by and conceptualized, I should say, by, by, by Maya El Khalil, um, who is... Just... Go ahead, Maya. No, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Beth Thomas, I just want to reinforce one thing, is that this is, again, uh, it's a group exercise. So I also wanted to thank that Danielle uh, Mahur, who is the assistant curator on this project, but also uh, uh, Sima, Reinrich, Boris, Abel, and Bettina Bender, and yourself. But it's really very much we're all involved in building that platform together. Yeah, very much of a group initiative. And I think it's also in the spirit of the platform itself. And I think you, you see that also by... Um, what the 14, 15 uh, artists that are now presented. Hopefully uh, that's gonna be more. Uh, do please take an opportunity to go through the website. Again, it's takemetotheriver.net um, and try to link to, uh, uh, to the artists that you think would be interesting for you. Find out whether you, know, you can collaborate. I think our intention is to facilitate that as much as possible. Um, we are very happy that you've done this work, uh, Maya. It is obviously a joint initiative. Um, and, and though you, you did take the helm there, so I think you were the person who was leading the thinking process behind it. Uh, but it's really come together very beautifully. And thank you to you and everybody else involved in that. Um, I would like now to take uh, the time to also officially thank Mael Khalil, again, curator of the platform Take Me to the River. I would also like to thank everybody that took their time from being at home, I hope, staying safe, I hope, and watching us tonight and uh, giving your comments. I'm sorry if we were not able to ask all the questions that were there. We are also a little bit in a crunch with time. Uh, I see we have one more minute. I would also like to take, take the opportunity to thank, thank my colleagues uh, from, from the Goethe Institute and the amazing team. Um, uh, and you mentioned them too, Maya. This is uh, Sima, this is Boris, this is Bettina. Um, I also wanna thank Daniela who has been working with you uh, directly for all the efforts. I would from the bottom of my heart also like to thank all the artists for the incredible work that they keep doing, the tireless uh, uh, sort of hours they put into this incredible work and actually the journey that they've taken us all and opened my view and my sort of horizon in terms of um, what the world really is about and the world that I think I know which actually I know nothing about. So thank you very much to all of you for uh, broadening our horizons and for teaching us more that climate and the environment has to do with so much more around our daily lives than we think. And finally, I would like to thank, as you said, Maya, but also from my side, I have the honor today to, to, to moderate this session, but actually also behind me is a whole uh, a group of incredible people from the Prince Klaus Fund, all my colleagues, you know who you are, I'm not gonna mention you by name, but thank you also for all the time and your dedication to actually making this platform, whether directly or indirectly possible on your behalf and on behalf of the Prince Klaus Fund. So also on behalf of the Goethe Institute 
and the Prince Faust one, I wish you all a great night. Please stay safe. And let's hope that this pandemic will be over soon and we can actually have Take Me to the River also physically. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us and have a great evening. Bye, Maya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.